Hello everyone and welcome to another live stream and this time we are going to work once again on uh, our little short film project that uh, we will be sharing every step of the way with you of how we create this animated short film and right now we're kind of at the very beginning still doing uh, the first little scene a little bit of a not an animation test, it will already be a little fully animated scene. Um, uh, going through all the stages, and the stage right now is storyboarding and animatic. And um, yeah, we still have uh, a, quite some pictures to draw for uh, that script that we've already written. And I've already done a dramatic reading of the script earlier in, in, in an earlier stream, so I'm not going to do that again. But um, yeah, uh, if you are interested in that, you can check that out in a previous version, in a previous episode of this uh, stream. Let's see who's in the chat. Vivek is there. Hello, Molly. Hi. Um, Oreo, I'm doing fine. Happy to see you too. And Gustavo, hello from Brazil. Yeah, hello from Germany. Welcome, welcome, everyone. Um, yeah, how is the uh, audio level working? I, I've never, I think I've never shared music um, while streaming in this app here, in Melon app. Um, I hope you can hear my voice okay and that the music isn't too loud. Um, uh, yeah, Vivek, right now I'm streaming in Melon, melonapp.com, which is a very cool browser-based um, streaming software. And it's pretty cool because um, uh, you can just have uh, guests joining. And uh, this is how how uh, JK and I did the streams where we would appear together on stream. Um, and we're going to animate... Uh, well, today... I want to jump into Clip Studio Paint a little bit. Um, I do still have open tunes open in the background because we did some uh, some drawings already in the last uh, live session that we worked on this project. Um, but I, yeah, I still have a Clip Studio Paint license, and I, I. I have to say, I really like, like, these are vector brushes, and I love how the pencil vector brush looks in Clip Studio Paint. Uh, there's still some limits, like, at least to my knowledge, I, I haven't used Clip Studio Paint a whole lot. Um, there's still some limits on what you can actually, how you can manipulate the uh, edge points and stuff like that. But yeah, I figured today we're gonna give Clip Studio Paint a little bit of a of a try um, and see how it works. Um, hello, Dylan. Hello, Ethan. Hello, Hilly. Nice to see you. Um, yeah. So last time um, we started the scene a little bit in the middle of everything. I think. I think I actually do want to start a little bit, um, a little bit earlier, because I realized that you know if we really start the scene uh, where she's just getting up, um, people might not be able to understand what's going on. So uh, the scene is Mila, who is this young mage. Um, she has to do farm work. She has to harvest the turnip sheep. And um, she would much rather just stay inside and read her books and practice her magic. But no, she has to help in the family business, on the family farm. She has to, um, to harvest the turnip sheep. Uh, and the turnip sheep are giving her all kinds of trouble. And I think this is where I want to start the scene, uh, where she's hanging on uh, one of the sheep trying to pluck the turnip from it. Uh, so that would be this part in the story. Uh, she manages to grab the sizable turnip, but it won't come off, and Mila just gets dragged along the patchy grass by the disgruntled animal. So, in Clips Do You Paint, I already created... Uh, I, I, this is a new animation um, 
uh, animation project. So it already has the animation folder created to, for me. All that I did, I deleted the bitmap, the raster layer and put a vector layer in it because I would like to work in vector brushes, vector strokes. And um, yeah, we need a good old scribble layer, I think, first. So we're gonna have a whole new animated um, folder and gonna have another, um, we're going to have another vector layer in there. So let's actually, um, I have some cursor options here that I want to switch on. So you can see where the mouse cursor is. Uh, it might be a little bit easier to see when I when I point things out and I, I can do stuff like this, where it's like, this is the vector layer. This is the icon for the vector layer. So I think that's a pretty handy tool. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna use a good old uh, brush pencil here and um, gonna put that first frame right there. I kind of like this picker where you can, if you've already done layers, um, you can just insert them um, with the right click. And you know, if you have like a naming system like for a walk cycle, it's gonna be really easy to pick your, your images when animating. So uh, maybe we should also give uh, give it a um, a try to animate at some point. Okay, so what I do want to draw is how Mila gets dragged along by the turnip sheep, and we're gonna start with some um, with some thumbnails first, starting not too big. Uh, so we can explore this a little. So in the script, I actually said that, you know, the turnip that Mila is plucking off the sheep is under the sheep, but I don't, I don't think that makes a whole lot of sense because they have, they have these little stubby legs. And I, I, I don't think that is working. So what we have, I think what we need to have is that it's one of the, um, one of the turnips on the side and we need to Mila uh, we need Mila to attach to it to hold on to it and the question is how is she actually holding on to it um, so she could probably hold it like this kind of this with both both hands um, and this is where she's complaining about that she would ra much rather stay inside, um, being dragged along like this. Uh, what do we do with the feet? They just gonna be, just gonna be on the ground. Yeah. So this is the first try for that kind of complex pose. Uh, I think the sheep's also gonna complain about this. Uh, and just going forward. Um, ah, JK is also there. Hello. Uh, if you want her to still be reaching, like with underneath, you could put it up high on the sheep. Ah, yeah, she's dangling down there. We can try that. Um, yeah, that that might give the right feeling of uh, you know hanging on to it. Okay, so maybe for this one, one arm is a little bit more relaxed. The other one is still reaching over. I do like that you get a, a little bit of different diagonals with this one. Um, so that might be kind of kind of interesting. 
the silhouette is so muddy for this right now. Uh, I think we have a long way. This is not an easy pose, I think. Um, so right now she's just facing us sideways. How would it look if she was actually looking down? Like maybe something like this. And maybe like the zipper would be down here. Oh yeah, and her, her legs then would bend in the other direction. I think that that enhances the defeated look even more. Cause she like face planted before this happened. Uh, but how is she holding on to it? Maybe like this. I like the silhouette of this one. And yeah, it, it can kind of like the, the turnip can kind of be wherever it is convenient. Okay. JK said, says, love that leg bend. Definitely fun. Yeah. <laughs> We're definitely going for fun to watch here. Not fun for... For Mila. <laughs> um, so. Uh, open Tunes is free. We're not right now working in open tunes we are in clip studio paint today but yeah open tunes is free uh and i can definitely recommend uh trying it because you know for the low low price of free it's definitely worth a shot it's a little bit uh more unusual um like you know open tunes works a little bit different than you might know from most uh most software uh and it has a little bit of a steep learning curve in the beginning um but it's totally worth getting into it and uh, we have tutorials about it on the channel so you might want to check that out um okay so what i'm doing right now is all of these were shown from the side and that's a very good first step when trying to find poses or storyboard uh, images because this is just how the brain thinks you know the brain thinks very like just in symbols and icons and you know it, it, it is enough to understand what's going on with this um, and what the brain tends to forget very easily is you know that this whole thing could happen in in 3d space um, which is what I would like to put try next. Um, so let's see. Um, and this way we, we put a little bit of dimensionality in this um, that we otherwise wouldn't have. And I think it could also help us to, you know, uh, show the distance of everything a little bit more show that this is like on a on a 3d space on a on a grassy surface or in this case actually dusty surface like I I, I, I want it to be really not fun for her to be dragged through the dragged through the scenery here um, so maybe you know there's some dust around and uh, yeah, and then they kind of like, you know, we have like kind of this 3D perspective thing going on for the motion, which is, you know, more difficult to animate, but uh, makes for a more interesting, makes for a more interesting animation. Um... Squirrel, Squirrel asks, could you explain how to hold a frame in Clip Studio Paint? Extend the length of time the frame stays on the timeline. Um, well, let me see if I if I remember that. Um, we need a new frame right now, so let's do... 
do that. Where is the, yeah. Okay, so we're done with our first drawing. So I'm going here to create a new one. And I don't want to create a new animation folder. I want to create a new animation cell. As far as I know, Open uh, Open Tools, um, Clip Studio Paint doesn't have any um, keyboard shortcuts set up by default, which I I I don't understand why. Uh, but it's also pretty cool that you know if you want, you can make it truly your own by thinking about the keyboard shortcuts that you're already to used. Uh, uh, used to using but if i remember cor correctly there at least in version one there's a version two out now uh, i'm in clip studio paint version one right now uh haven't done the upgrade yet um anyway this is how you make a new image and i think right now it already created the uh the image here and i think you hold it by just clicking and dragging the other frame over yeah, I think all you need to do is click and drag the other frame to another position. So it doesn't have like, it doesn't feel like the click and drag thing from Open Tunes, but you're kind of doing the exact same thing uh, just with that very thin line. I think you don't even need to hit that line. I think you can, yeah, hit anywhere, anywhere there on this first frame and then place it. Um, All right, so I think this is a good segue into doing the actual storyboard drawing. We already discovered, uh, did, did some discovery here. Um, and I, th yeah, maybe we should do one or two more drawings just to discover it a little bit more. Um, so we could maybe do it here. Um, so let's work with the sheep a little bit. Like the sheep could be like really, maybe jumping towards the camera a little bit. It might be too much, but let's, let's try it. Um, Okay, so we have this relatively high up. I do want it to, you know, maybe it could be outside of the silhouette and one inside of the silhouette, maybe one on top. I think it's good to see at least three of those um, turnips. So you don't, you you know, if, if you have never seen that concept, uh, maybe you're, it's easier to understand. And there we have the hand going over. And yeah, the hand, hand going back. And she being completely on the ground. I think it's pretty dynamic. Hello, Darren T. Nice to have you on the stream. How are you doing? Okay, maybe have her scarf here. Um, she could be a little bit more 3D right now. She looks very sideways. Um, so let's make sure we're doing an actual like, you know, cylinder shape here and i guess she would be looking up a little bit a raised chin can be so difficult to draw sometimes but you know it might be worth just to, to try <laughs> to get that little bit of perspective Mm. Okay, and then we have that hand coming from that side and maybe just the fingers here 
and there we have the turnip. Also, don't forget about the perspective for the legs and some dust. And the sheep could get quite a lot bigger. And I think the snout should be entirely in the in the wool. So we are not breaking the silhouette and uh, doing too much unnecessary detail, maybe. And we're doing one in here and one there. And yeah, I think I like that. I think that could work quite well. So let's do that. Yeah, nice to have you here live, Darren. Darren makes a really awesome uh, open tunes tutorial. Uh, tutorial. Speaking of open tunes and learning open tunes and trying open tunes because it's free, uh, definitely check out Darren T's uh, channel. There's so many helpful videos about, uh, yeah, mastering different aspects of this a uh, little bit unusual program. Um, but once again, this is Clip Studio Paint today. We're not working in Open Tunes today. Okay, so let's do the actual uh, storyboard drawing. Let's get rid of that one. And go to number three. Can I just, yeah, I can just type in a number and it switches to it. That's uh, pretty cool. I mean, a lot of animation software does it like this, but uh, yeah. All right. Ah, um, JK suggests you could have the turnip attached via a leafy stalk to get some space between the sheep and Mila. Um, yeah, that that might be something. And then have it snap at some point during the dragging. Yeah, we we could we could try. Let's see. Um, well, that we should still do here in our thumbnailing layer. Uh, can I move the layer? Hello? Move, move layer? Ah, there we go. Okay. <laughs> Guarantee fan crowd here. <laughs> Uh, I really, I really like how like all of these communities overlap. Like you know, you can go visit my stream, you can go in Darren T's uh, live stream and videos, and uh, uh, the Pratt brothers on Twitch uh, have really awesome streams as well. And it's so nice to see familiar faces everywhere. Um... Oh, let's try something for the sheep to uh, put the head up. I don't think we did that yet. Um, uh, <laughs> yeah. The poor sheep. Um, and uh, okay, so we will have a little bit of a. I guess it would be completely stretched like a vine or something. It, it might explain, oh, we also forgot, we, you know, we might want to do some leaves on the sheep. So we, we clearly explain this concept of plants uh, growing on it. Uh, 
uh, I think this could actually make uh, help people to understand what's going on. Um, I always have trouble with that like upper arm because it might cover up her face, which is okay. And then we need to have like her cylinder style body. Oh, I think I like this one a lot. Not sure which leg should be up, which one should be down. We lost a little bit of the the perspective. It's okay, we can probably put that back in. And have some leaves up here. Okay. Yeah, I like this one. Um, but you know, if you spend that much for every single drawing, you're gonna, you're gonna sit here for quite a while. So let's just take this one and, uh, can I just paste it on other layers? I guess we're going to find out. Hmm. Okay. You can't, uh, is there a paste into layer? Paste to shown position. Hmm. Okay. So it has a little bit of the same problem that um, Krita has. Um, that you have to merge layers if you want to... Uh, if, we, if we merge 3 and 2A... Um... Merge selected layers. I didn't put it on the timeline because two was on top of it. So maybe if I do it like this, merge selected layers. No, it's a new drawing, so it doesn't. It always wants to call it 2A. Or maybe it has to do with the last layer that I selected. This one to this one. Merge selected layers. There we go. Now we have layer number three. Okay. Um that is good to know. There might be a way around this. If there are any, uh, if there are any pros out there. Um, for Clip Studio Paint, how to paste directly in one layer. Uh, what is my phone doing? It's buzzing like crazy. <laughs> Uh, okay, so uh, we want to have uh, no, I can't. Uh... Oh, did I, I switched color to white? <laughs> that doesn't work. Uh, okay, so I think we should plan out how the sheep is actually going to run. So I think we're gonna have a background uh, background folder. So I'm gonna make a new animated folder for the background. One should actually go to the back. And we're gonna have a new vector drawing and um, I want a fairly low horizon. So well, let's put the drawing in here. I want fairly low horizon. Uh, keep in mind that the horizon that we use might not necessarily be the horizon of our scene. So the horizon of our scene might be here. Hmm. A little bit 
entire something like this. That's the horizon of our scene, but maybe, you know, the horizon of the, uh, the fence is a little bit lower. Uh, so it would be like this. And uh, just a curve. And then we would have some lines to give us um all right i would have the sheep start out here i think i want to try to make it taller again i like that we had that in some of the concept art Um, and then let's make the next drawing to make it, first of all, let's make this drawing longer. How can I do that? Can I drag this frame over? Oh, here at the top, I can drag it. Oh, that's good to know. Okay. So at the top, there are handles as well. push things hmm not sure I totally understand what they're for and how they work but all right um okay so we have uh, no we want the pencil Okay, um, next drawing for the sheep coming closer. Oh, I can make a new cell right from here. That's good to know. We're going to do that in the future. Um, and uh, onion skin, I must admit, I have forgotten. How did that work again? Uh, show enemy uh, enable onion skin. There we go. That makes a whole lot of sense. And we have sheep come closer. And look a little bit derpy. However, we're going to animate this later. And now right click. We're going to create a new animation cell. And uh, Have it come very close to the camera. And then maybe we're gonna have Mila being dragged behind there. Um, okay, as for Mila. bit of detail in there oh we wanted to get some distance so maybe she just fell so her uh, feet are still 
up in the air and they're gonna come further down through the uh, a little bit later hmm Maybe it's higher up. Give us a clear silhouette. point we also still have to figure out her character design a little bit more i really do like the contrast to maybe like her jaw and nose and everything is a little bit more triangular uh, and her hair is very round it would be quite quite cool she's wearing that scarf and is being dragged along. All right, we could also just uh, scale her up, but I'm kind of missing 2D animation right now. <laughs> So I'm uh, confessing I'm doing already a little bit too much uh, dipping into how I would uh, plan this shot if it was like in the middle of the animation process. Um, this is becoming a little bit of a animation thumbnailing thing right now, but I'm, I'm okay with that. I want to have some fun tonight. coming down. Haley says, I have a cat in front of my monitor. I That's a, a common problem if you have cats. I, <laughs> I totally know what you mean. Always at the most inconvenient moments. <laughs> I was teaching the other night and, you know, I, I knew that Rainbow would come and uh, sit in front of of me while while I was doing the class. So I was like, ah, let's just let's try to play a little bit with her. So, um, you know, she's a little bit powered out and maybe doesn't meow as much when I'm not going to be able to pay any attention to her so i tried to play with her and she didn't really want to play and then of course the moment the live stream started the moment the class started uh that i was supposed to teach she really really was meowing for some some play time <laughs> Okay, let's switch off onion skin. Yeah, doing too much animation right now. <laughs> but I, I kind of have to say I do like the last image the most just because it feels so 
so spontaneous in the lines. I really like how that feels. Um, she's actually speaking while she's being dragged along, if I remember correctly. So I think this is a nice one to, you know, get this whole thing started. But then I think we might have to cut closer to her. Um, and let's see how that could look. Oh yeah, right click, new cell. Let's do it like that. <laughs> Darren T's cat is, uh, also does the same. Sits in front of the monitor. Oh, those cats. Your animation cell right here. And the absurd thing is also, I have a little basket here next to my desk, or on my desk, um, where Rainbow can chill while I'm working on the computer. Um, and uh, if I don't work, like for whatever ever reason, I have a day off or something, or I start working later than uh, usual, uh, Rainbow would already be here in her basket. Uh, waiting for me for me to uh, to come to work. Okay, so. As she's being dragged along, she's saying... It's more fun than reading, my father said. Enjoy the day in the sun, he said. So she's a little bit sarcastic. Um, maybe she's rolling her eyes. Yeah, because I think what wouldn't fit is to have her go like full on like half eyes. Um... I don't know. That feels a little bit harsh for her. Um, so I think I'm just going to have her look over to the side. I'd be like a little bit annoyed. Yeah, I think the eyebrows really do it for this one. And the mouth shape should also not be too aggressive. She's, you know, she is kind of gentle. Um, Ah, a couple of questions in the chat on Facebook. Uh, Sabir is asking, how much do you take for animation per second? Like, you mean how much time it takes to animate a second of animation? Uh, it, it depends, you know, depending on how, on the animation style and how difficult the shot is, you might need a, a week or two for just one second of animation. Um, if it's for like a television production, um, we'll try to animate a lot faster and find ways how to, you know, uh, speed up the process as much as possible. Um, so that they can actually do like 10 seconds per week or something like that. Uh, but it, it's still... It always is a laborious process. Um, let's take the eraser. Like the vector eraser here. I can just cross out lines and it gonna it's gonna cut it out till the next intersection. Um, so, uh, Alien Slug King asks, in the process of making a short film, would you make the storyboards first, then 
the thumbnails. Well, it depends on what what kind of thumbnails. You know, I'm doing thumbnails for storyboarding uh, because it, it it helps me. Like, I feel like the first thing that I draw doesn't tend to be good enough. Um, so I do like to do thumbnails already for uh, thinking about what I do in the storyboard. Um, like, I'm not that great at just, um, just storyboarding. Like, look at this. This is this is not this is not particularly good, but I think it's going to work in the cut. Um, ah, I really don't like it. I really don't like it. Let's try something else. Uh, so maybe sideways. Um, so I, I do thumbnails for, for panels of animation and, you know, right now I'm kind of also, you know, I'm working in the full size, but I'm treating this more or less like a thumbnail, uh, to be like, if, if, if I didn't like a drawing, like, like just now, uh, I, I can just throw it away. Um, and try something else. Uh, where's the pen? So let's see how the site, like site view is always a, a thing to be um, careful with because it, it feels very uncinematic. But I feel like for her to be kind of passively dragged behind, it might it might work quite well. I don't think I ever drew a side view of her yet. We're still working on the character design. And obviously, this is very, very rough. Okay, let's zoom in on this one. Let's see if that works better as a cut. So if we cut from this one to this one. I think that could work. And here we have some patches of, well, actually we'll have, this will mostly be mud. Sir Kubas, thank you for subscribing. Welcome, welcome. Uh, this will mostly be this will mostly be uh, dry because you know the they already ate all the grass. It could also be that at this point the turnip has come down. So let's do a new animation cell. Uh, Guacamole is asking, hello, I myself want to start working on an animation short film. I have experience in graphics, but really worried about the animation. Uh, any tips? How do I start? So, um, the software we're using right now is uh, Clip Studio Paint, 
and uh, yeah, I also we might anim be animating this in Open Tunes. I just switched to Clip Studio Paint for this live stream because I wanted to try it, and I really like the vector pencil that it has. So the thing about the animation part, like if you've never you've never done animation before, um, then it can be nice to start with a project, um, you know, that gives you the motivation to um, push and learn certain things. You know, maybe maybe you get your animate, uh, maybe you get your um, motivation from jumping into the cold water. Um, but generally, you should definitely do a, a couple of. Uh, animation exercises first. Uh, we do have some on this very YouTube channel um, that you could try. Uh, we have a 2D animation course. I think the, the link is down here in the scroll bar. Um, so you should definitely do some of the basic exercises first and maybe do a little test animation. That's the other thing that I would recommend you do as well is to um, uh, don't expect the first animation that you do to actually end up in the film. Uh, it's okay to do like animation tests first and then, you know, uh, continue to grow with your animation skills uh, throughout the process. And the very first animations that you do uh, are just animation tests. They're not meant to end up in the final, in the final film. Um, Uh, and also the animation tests, like they do in Disney films, they do animation tests too, to uh, um, see how, what the exact animation style is supposed to be and how far they want to push things. And, uh, you know, it's a very good step to do. Uh, I think I like this one. I think we could zoom in even more. Ah, uh, Guacamole says, I have done basic animations. That's, that's good. Um, did you get feedback on these basics animations from a professional? Because I feel like, especially in the beginning, uh, having somebody give you feedback can really eye opening uh, and help you to see some of the some of the things that are really uh, worth getting into more, practicing more. Yeah, I think I really like this cut now. And this is this would also be the shot where her where the um, where the thing snaps off and she falls down. Uh, yeah, Alien uh, has an has a good question. Um, uh, if you're familiar with animation, what part of animation are you worried about? Uh, yeah, so if you if you're already good at the basics, like what what is making you nervous? Um, Squirrel says, "Is open tunes you are ready? Can it be used professionally, or is it just for fun if it's free?" Um, uh, um, open tunes is very professional. Like it's even for an open source software, it's kind of like. Its barrier is that it is a little bit too professional because the learning curve at the very beginning is pretty steep. Uh, it's it's not like it's confusing at the beginning. Uh, I uh, recommend starting with the tutorial, like 
some that we have on the channel, open tunes tutorials that we have on the channel, or Darren T's animation tutorials are also very nice. Um, but uh, I think so. Personally, what I always say about software is uh, familiar familiarize yourself with as many different softwares as possible. Uh, have a look into as many different programs as possible because it could very well be that for that one project you choose this software and for another software that has a different art style that has a different animation style uh, or maybe even animation workflow uh, another soft software might be more uh, fitting so by knowing lots of different animation software, you can always choose the right tool. That's the one advantage. The other advantage is at a certain point, animation software is not like, sure, each animation software has unique functions and features that work a little bit better. But generally, any 2D animation software has a timeline and you can place drawings on a timeline. That's it. If you learn a new 2D animation software, you need to learn how to create a new frame, a new drawing, how do I put drawings on, on the timeline, uh, and that's it. Like, where's the onion skin? You need to learn where the buttons are that you already know. So, um, I think people misjudge that when they first start learning animation, they're like, oh, it took, took me forever to learn that one animation software. but. Each new animation software gets easier to learn, but you because you're no longer learning the animation basics, you're just looking like where are the um, the, the buttons in this one, where are the buttons and functions that I already know in this one, and then you'll be positively surprised if something works better than it, it works in, in in another software or something like that. Um, Clip Studio Paint has some very cool like this animation cell desk panel seems to be really cool um, where you can onion skin not just the previous and next frame but you can throw any image in there and shift it to a different position open tunes i think has something similar too um, uh, so that's a very professional function that clip studio paint has here um, i think the brushes like if you if you're into like uh, cool brushes. Clip Studio Paint might have an engine that is a little bit more refined, but the the Open Tunes brushes are getting really, really good. And if you're just doing a black outline, you can use Open Tunes. You can use Clip Studio Paint. Um, I don't know. I guess my 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 mm, mm, bottom line is you have to try both. Um, because there might be personal preference, there might be art style uh, requirements that that ch change your um, your choice. Yeah, and that's also a good point. Clip Studio Paint has built in uh, Clip Studio Tunes level export, and you can even transfer the timeline timing too. So you can work in both. You can actually work in uh, in Clip Studio Paint and then import that in Open Tunes um, because they have compatible formats. Uh, Clip Studio Paint is great for animation on its own too. Just make a shortcut to create a folder and insert layer. This is the key. Also use the assign multiple cells button. Okay, thank you, JP. Um, I think we're definitely gonna, at some point, we're gonna, um, uh, we're gonna do animation in Clip Studio Paint just to see how it is. Um, so, oh, there's some, some more awesome questions there. Um, so Guacamole clarifies, I mean, I can't do complex character animation, like different camera views. Then that is something that I would definitely, um, practice in like practice shots, maybe stuff, you know, sometimes it can also be good if you're working on a, a story, working on a, um, 
uh, a short film to do something that has not much to do with the short film. And if you say like I that you have problems uh, drawing characters from different angles, I would recommend um, I would recommend you just do lots of test drawings um, and uh, try to get better at that. Um, so that you're you're prepared. Uh, when when it later comes to the comes to the real project. All right, how is this gonna gonna be when she? She's definitely she has like if she hasn't face planted at this point yet. I think she needs to. <laughs> She needs to now. Poor Mila. Okay, so, um, this is gonna be. We need to see how this is going to be animated later. But she's just falling into the dirt. Yeah. It's gonna starting to be distracting, so. I definitely need to put that on a shortcut too if it doesn't have a shortcut. <laughs> And her hair would actually come to the front from the overshoot. All right. I'm doing too much animation here. <laughs> Another very good question from Ayush, should you draw full figure even if it's going to be a mid shot? Um, the hip is always very important for the pose of the, in the rest of the body. Um, so that um, can really help um, to find the balance in the rest of the body. Like I like to do at least in thumbnailing so you know let's say if i have a mid shot and a character is like uh doing like uh you know having the the arms at the side kind of proud pose so it can really help to think about what the rest of the body is doing so you can have uh, a line of action and then plan the entire pose around that line of action. Um, and that might help you to like, okay, I want the shoulders to be like, like this. And then, you know, there's counter posture, which means that you have to tilt the hip like this. 
and um, then you kind of get something like this. And then let's say you're animating a little bit and there is a, you know, this, this shot is held over multiple uh, seconds, multiple uh, sentences maybe of a dialogue. And you know, uh, the character is doing something that changes the line of action and changes the counter posture. Then you know that now maybe the, um, maybe the, the shoulders have tilted and your counter posture then needs to tilt as well. Uh, so you would now have the weight being distributed a little bit different. So this character, uh, if this was two poses, they would have to shift over just slightly, you know, not a lot to keep the balance and keep the center of gravity above the base of support. So even if you don't draw all of this, uh, it's important that you know, at least intuitively, what is happening here, that there's a shift happening that might require to shift the entire uh, character over. Let's draw the previous pose maybe in a different uh yeah so you would know that you know there's quite a distance here and drawing the entire character or thinking about the entire posture can help you help you to figure this out um <laughs> That's thank you, FNS. Yeah, I mean, I I do just try to be myself because you know, uh, anything else I feel like is just exhausting. Um, Squirrel says I really like the painting illustration tools in Clip Studio Paint, so I wondered if Open Tools focuses on that or if it's just for animation. Uh, I mean. Like digital painting, I would probably not do in uh, in open tunes, like the background paintings. You can, the brushes are okay, they're decent, uh, but you know, Clip Studio Paint, the makers of Clip Studio Paint and and uh, and Photoshop, they like you know they have entire armies of full time developers working on the brush engine and stuff like that and. The, the people from OpenTunes do amazing work. Uh, it's like, uh, it's always baffling how this software can be so good. Um, but to in my experience, and I'm not a painter, uh, I, 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 I would probably choose a different software to paint in. Um, and Clip Studio Paint's strength might also be the illustration and brush side. Uh, while the animation tools seem to be really well thought out, there are some minor problems sometimes with performance. Like for me, I really have to, like there's an animation playback settings where I, ha I have to put in prefer speed. Uh, even on this computer, which is like a, a, a 3D workstation, it, it cannot play most things with uh, full frame rate. Um, and uh, and Open Tunes was built all around animation, so you know, for Clip Studio to uh, paint, it feels a little bit like they have had an amazing painting drawing tool, and then we're like, hey, we could also do animation, and you know, Open Tunes doesn't feel like this. Open Tunes feels like they started with the concept of this is going to be an animation tool. Uh, so it feels a little bit different. Uh, oh, thank you, Darren. <laughs> ah, JK is, is voting for Procreate, yeah. Uh, I, I heard lots of good things about this. Eventually, I have to kind of get uh, uh, an iPad 2 and join the iPad crowd because it's, uh, I, I really like the... Um, like, I don't know, for some reason, drawing on paper now feels weird to me because I'm just like... 
Not that I specifically miss anything from digital, but you know, the impulse to just hit Ctrl Z uh, or undo something real quick or shift the layer over real quick. Um, I don't know, like I still like the, the feeling of drawing on paper. It, it's a very unique and amazing feeling, but you know, if you're like in a, in a, in a production or something, uh, I feel like doing concept art on an iPad or something like that could be uh, a little more productive um, than on paper. And you ha already have it all digitalized and you already have it on maybe full HD and you can just throw it into your, into your animation, into your video editing software. Uh, okay, let's erase all of these lines to make sure this reads as her arm being in front okay um i'm doing too much animation <laughs> Ah, JK is bringing the iPad next time to the stream. That's a really good idea. Uh, still have a lot of, a lot of scribbling to do. Okay, so she's talking in this one, and then falling, and that will probably also create some dust. Okay. Oh, you meant in person. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I would love to try it. Sure. Next time we meet up, it's just uh, as if that's a thing that happens regularly. <laughs> that I from Germany meet JK from the US. Uh, yeah, we're actually going to meet up. I'm, I'm going to be in the US uh, end, of, uh, end of April, early May. <laughs> at uh yeah yeah that's that's crazy <laughs> jp uh jp says uh, csp is the best clip studio paint is the best timeline for the uh, tie downs i have ever seen okay hmm yeah I'm, I'm looking forward to uh to trying a little bit more Okay. Oh, we still need, need to get rid of the little drawing up there. Uh, oh, okay. Okay. Oh. <laughs> All right. I think this one we can just throw away for now. Oh, it deletes the drawing when you when you do that. Delete frame. Uh, yeah. And this one we can delete too. Sometimes I leave them just so during editing I can I can decide which one I want. Okay. Okay. Uh, bye, JK. JK's next art style live stream will be Monday at 10 a.m. Eastern time. If anyone wants to swing by, yeah, um, I can really recommend uh, watching his streams. Uh, he's on a wonderful journey refining his art style 
uh, and 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 building one from a lot of inspiration and thoughts on, uh, you know, thoughts about all the different aspects that go into an art style. Um, so if you're interested in that and learn a lot about art and all the different elements that make up an art style, uh, that's really, really recommended. Um, okay, so in Open Tunes, we already had... Uh, we already had her get off the ground. But I feel like now we need a, a drawing that is actually further away. Um, so let's think about it. Um, let's create a new cell. And... Hmm. So, maybe this is coming a bit more from above. Her hair is still giving me the hardest time. Like, I still want to make her have, like, very curly hair. Because it's. I feel like it's a thing that you see very rarely. And I feel like there are, like, you know, female heroes. They always have the same kind of straight, straight hair hairstyles. And I wanted to try something a little bit different. Because, you know, she also is... Uh, not the typical hero. She's very shy. Um, um, what is she actually? Um, what is she actually saying at this point? Where is... Oh, did I... Close it? No, it's here. Um, oh, she spits out sand and gets up again. Um, the turnip, the turnip comes off, dropping her in a dusty spot of dried mud. <laughs> Sir Snuffles, which is the sheep. <laughs> Mila, <laughs> why are you my dad's favorite? You stubborn. So maybe she's really like wiping her mouth or something like that from the dust. Um, and really pushing herself up. And the turnip is probably just laying there. Um, JP says, you have to set shortcuts in Clip Studio Paint. Go to settings, layer, new layer, all the way down, you'll find create folder and insert layer. Ah, Control G is your recommendation for that one. Then you can uh, press Control G, and that single frame becomes the entire subfolder of frames for tie downs or inking a sketch all in one single frame. Ooh. Create folder because you can nest folders and have the folder be a frame. Oh, I see. Okay. That 
is helpful. I definitely gonna I think before we do the animation stream I'm gonna um, I'm gonna do some more uh, research about the tool hmm how about we change the camera angle and we actually gonna um, actually gonna be behind her She is trying to get up. Mm. But she was kind of splayed out there. sheep get away happily maybe you can not see the not really see the mouth at all should be a hole where the the one previously was So for Mila, let's just um, take her and make her oh, bigger. I do like the cut to be like, okay, she fell <laughs> and then she's getting up and sees the sheep going and hmm, sheep is pulling, she falls down. Let's get rid of this one for now. She falls down and sees the sheep running off. Getting pulled, getting pulled. And the sheep is getting away. And uh, I'm going to just duplicate that drawing. Okay. Maybe. Here, duplicate layer. So B. And then we can just make him smaller. You know, saving some work. Okay. Yeah, I like that. Uh, 
Also make a shortcut for check cell motion by key input. I have mine linked to Z. What does check cell motion do? Ah, this will activate a mode where all your timeline frames are set to the one to nine keys for slip flipping through. Oh, that sounds awesome. It seems like they really put some some nice functions in there for animation, but you do have to map them to a key. And I think here we can we can go back to her going up, turning around, and then there's the cobalt there. And she's saying something to the cobalt. Okay, so the full storyboard for this point would be uh, she's being dragged along things okay she's being dragged along and saying uh, my father said what what did she say she says it's more fun than reading my father said enjoy the day in the sun he said so it's <laughs> it's more fun than reading my father said enjoy the day in the sun my father said <laughs> And then the sheep is taking off and she's like, how are you my favorite? Uh, how are you my father's favorite sheep? And sees hmm. the whole reaction. It doesn't make sense that she reacts that much as if she already knows that the, the goblin is there. Uh, but we're going to figure that out later. Um, <laughs> Darren T says, you fall into my trap. This is more of an animatic. Yeah, totally. I love doing animatics. Um, and I like them more than just storyboards. I feel like storyboards don't... <sighs> Maybe I should them do more reduced storyboards. Uh, but I feel like for me, the gestures and the poses are already so important. Uh, so no, I, I, I can't do just a storyboard that has like very reduced, uh, just the camera angles and stuff like that, because I, like, I try to separate it. I try to separate the step in my head and it never works. And you know, the character performance is the thing that I'm uh i'm going after <laughs> so yeah my storyboards are always already animatics like i i i just can't i have some um i have some um i forgot what i was going to say <laughs> Like, I have some problems just setting up camera motions or, like, the really rough story. Like, that doesn't really interest me, so I always immediately dip into character performance. <laughs> um, yeah, JP, uh, JP says about Clips to Pain, it's such a good program for animation. Once you really set it up, though, most people will never know. Yeah. I had that feeling too. Like the first time I found out like there were no shortcuts set, I was like, oh, this must not be really good. Uh, because, you know, Photoshop is like this. Photoshop has like a completely neglected timeline, completely shitty workflows, and you need to find workarounds for the most simple things. And they don't have any reasonable keyboard shortcuts set up. Um, so I was like, oh, well, Clip Studio Paint is like that too. Uh, but the more I look into it, the more I do realize, like, like, and what I've already seen, uh, like, you know, stuff like the animation cell bar up here, this is something that was set up by professional animators. Like, you don't get a tool like this uh, by accident. <laughs> um, whereas, you know, the whole Photoshop tools, for example, the Photoshop animation tools feel like, you know, 
a software developer was brainstorming what somebody could need for animation. And I think Clip Studio Paint feels a lot more like animators were actually saying, hi, hey, I need this, I need that. Um, Squirrel asks, what are the most important shortcuts to set up and how would you do that? Uh, um, they already set a little bit earlier uh, where you can set up the, the shortcuts and for what settings, like uh, a couple tips, a couple hints they already gave us for the new layer and the single frame and sub subfolders and stuff like that. And the flipping mode, the, uh, what's it called? check cell motion um so those those sound already pretty good but yeah uh, JP, uh, jp if you have any more um i'm definitely gonna make sure to visit the chat later and get all of that out later <laughs> so thank you so very much for your tips um all right, so let's browse through it one more time. So she was dragging her. It's more fun than reading, my father said. Go out in the sun, my father said. <laughs> and then she's like, how are you my father's favorite sheep? And then I think her next pose needs to be more... Um, She's like kind of just turning a little bit. You know, it's, she really only wants to. Um... She only really wants to put the turnip away. Like that's the reason why she turns. She doesn't turn because she noticed the goblin. Um, and open tunes. What are you doing? Trying to save, huh? Can you? Oh, it crashed while saving. Open tunes. You're not. You're not making a really good impression. Come on. Come on. I don't know, lately OpenTunes really had some trouble handling the files. I do have them on a server, like I have a, a backup server that I work on uh, that's syncing with my Dropbox and uh, it has been working fine for years, but lately it seems to have trouble opening files from it and it saved it fine, it just crashed after saving. Which okay, I mean, if you if you have to crash, then crashing after saving is uh, the best time for that. Okay, so she's. Kind of just turning over. Turnip. All right. Oh, you know what? Let's try 
Let's try a different one. I do like this is very important to me to already lead the impulses because if I as the director don't do that at some point uh, like most animators do a really good job about thinking like why is a character turning and you know they 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 really put the work in it uh, but you know sometimes I feel like if I do have a specific vision of why I want a character to go through a certain impulse. Um, I feel like I can help everybody involved if I already put that into the storyboard. If I already make clear, um, you know, this is the reason why she turns. She wants to put the turnip away. Um, And then maybe if we change this one for her to hold the turnip. Here. I think that could clarify the acting a little bit. Oh, these needed to shift over. Okay. Let's get rid of the JP says, Open Tunes 1.7 is coming soon, has many bug fixes and awesome new features. Oh, I'm, I'm okay, I'm excited. I always like uh, a, a jump in versions in Open Tunes, it always brings really cool new stuff. Um, yeah, uh, JP. JP mentions the subfolders, Clip Studio Paint. The link I sent are some really nice Clip Studio Paint animation icons. Uh, you might not be able to send uh, links in the chat. It's kind of restrictive right now because we had a lot of spammers at some point. Um, but I'm, if I find it, I'm, I'm make sure to share it on the next stream. Things like delete and assign multiple cells, which is how you reverse frames or add frames from in imports. Okay. Hi, Malberto. Nice to see you. Welcome, welcome. Okay. Maybe there's not much reaction right now. It's just... Oh. So, she's turning around. She's looking. Saying like, how can you be my father's favorite sheep? Turns around and it's like, <gasps> what is that? And then we see the goblin stashing away the the stuff, and she's like, "Hey, stop that!" And the goblin is like, "No." <laughs> okay. 
so, um, let's see, let's change some music. Yeah, uh, if you people enjoy the uh, way that I talk about animation and you want me to give you feedback on your own projects that could be a character animation, it could be just a character design, storyboard, animatic, story idea, whatever it is from the world of art and animation, I can give you feedback because we have our uh, Patreon on patreon.com slash Animator Island where you can support us and one of the tiers that we have, no other way, <laughs> this one, one of the tiers that we have on patreon.com slash Animator Island is the group mentoring tier where you can join an exclusive live stream for members only every single month where I give you input on your projects. I'm going to draw over your animations, annotate, give you tips and tricks, um, and help you to improve not only that specific animation, that specific piece of art, but also help you to shape and sharpen your skills in general. So if that is something that you're interested in, you might want to check it out at patreon.com slash animator island. And uh, yeah, and of course you can also just support me on Patreon if you want, if you really enjoy these live streams and the videos that we make and you want us to make more of those, then you could become a supporter there and help us to make a whole lot more. There's so much stuff we would like to do, but you know, it's always difficult to have a YouTube channel on the site when you still have to do all of these other projects to make money uh, and Patreon helped uh, make a lot of stuff come true, like the 2D animation series that's kind of a little stagnating right now, but the only reason that it got so far at all was because of Patreon, and I appreciate every single one of my supporters over there. Um, yeah, and I just wanted to say thank you, and of course, also thank you for everyone for watching. I know that not everyone can, uh, can give money, but I really appreciate anyone. You, just if you come into the into the chat and uh and and talk here that's also a really great way of uh yeah supporting and um i really enjoy it so um yeah and with that i think um oh jp never shut up with your super helpful tips for Clip Studio Paint. That was really helpful. It's really cool how, you know, no matter what software I use, some expert will come out of the chat that be like, you know, this is actually how you do this easier in Blender, or this is actually how you do this in Open Tunes. And uh, it looks like you are all our Clip Studio Paint person from now on. <laughs> I really appreciate that. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about uh discovering clip studio paint a little bit more i'm also excited about looking into blender a little bit more blender is actually also a contender um where we might do the actual animation because you know having a, a sheep rampage in 3d i think could be quite nice um so yeah um <laughs> Darren T says, I love how quickly you can start to see an animation come together. That's the magic part, right? Just a few, uh, what is it? Uh, just a few drawings and suddenly life appears. Indeed, indeed. That is just the pure magic of animation when that happens. I, I love that moment. Um, and, you know, that's the other reason why I like creating so many, so many drawings for uh, for my storyboards because that's when you can already feel the scene starting to breathe uh, and starting to become alive. Um, yeah, and I'm really like, I think this will be so amazing just seeing this all with the temp track, with the music and the, the like just a temp voice recording, just me crappily acting out the voices. I think I will already enjoy that so much because I haven't done that 
in so long for my own projects. I've only ever done customer projects in like the, the last five years or so. And it's really, I like, I, I can't, I can't even believe it that I'm working on this project now. Um, and and it, it felt so weird to work on something that, you know, this is not making me money anytime soon. I'm just doing this for myself. And somehow it cost me a lot of, like, it felt like I had to overcome an obstacle to, to say like, hey, it's okay. It's okay to work on a project now that I'm not being paid for immediately. Uh, I don't know. I got really stuck somehow, I feel like. I don't know. And this is my attempt to get unstuck. <laughs> um... Yeah, yeah. Bye, squirrel. And uh, actually, I unfortunately also have to go soon. Uh, actually, nowish. Um, but if there are any more questions uh, that we can answer before, uh, then just let me know. It's your last chance. <laughs> and then I think I'm also gonna wrap it up for today. I do want to do another live stream very soon. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure entirely when this will be, um, definitely next week. Yeah, pretty cool. Um, Darren says, that's really good that you found time for a personal project. You have no idea how amazing that feels. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm really excited about this one. Um, and I hope it will make it to the animation stage. Um, but I'll also be happy just with an awesome animatic. Um, and yes, I'll be sharing the entire process. That's the, uh, that's the other thing, you know, I might not be able to make as many animation tutorials while I'm working on this, but as a substitute for me, maybe not writing tutorials anymore as much, uh, I, I want to really share like every single step, like the live streams over the next year will document this process from beginning to end. And I will, I'll talk about everything. Uh, how I do it, how I learned doing it at studios and from amazing other mentors. Uh, I'm going to share everything with you. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm very excited about that. It's going to be a long way. <laughs> it's going to be lots of live streams. Uh, but at the end, uh, I hope we have this amazing action sequence for now. And, you know, maybe the start of an entire series. We'll see. <laughs> Um, Darren says, I struggle to find time for just animating, so it's good to see someone else doing it. Yeah, <laughs> I had that too. Like, I actually had that, you know, I've been doing the mentoring group for over a year now, and I was always so jealous when my mentoring students were like, I worked on this every day this week. Well, like, oh, I want to... I want to be a student again and work on a, just a fun animation every day of the week. Um, but yeah, <laughs> hopefully I can do this more and more now. Um, all right. So everybody, so that was such an amazing stream today. Thank you all so very much for talking in the chat, uh, for being so encouraging. Uh, I had a great time and I hope I could uh, show you a little bit of my process. Hope it was helpful. Um, and I hope you're having a fantastic day uh, and some happy Easter days, if that's something you celebrate. Um, and yeah, looking forward to the next live stream. I hope you're doing well. Keep on animating and see you soon. Bye-bye.